Go. Hello, uh, Dennis from Planet Mosh in uh, the, the luxurious log cabin, five stars. You can see them through the hole in the roof. Talking to John from Holocaust. John, okay. thank you for your time. You're very welcome. Yeah, and uh, you, you played on the main stage on Friday night? Yeah. Yeah, enjoyed that? Yeah, I certainly did. It was, um, it, it, at the time, it actually felt quite like hard work, though, because um, I think there was about 10 actual Holocaust fans there, and the rest of them were people who, you know, maybe knew the small hours thanks to Metallica, but, you know, it, it was just kind of okay, we felt about this band. Come on then. Which is good. That's actually a good challenging situation, you know, and the whole thing got warmer and warmer and warmer until at the end, you know, we've been a great response. Yeah. I've got to um, say that's the thing with the festival, it's a double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, but obviously with your own gig, you've got your own crowd there, but with festivals, mm -hmm. you get yeah, a chance yeah. to make and new and fans and yeah, it's it be the next Holocaust generation. It is, it is healthy, because yeah. I mean, then, then, you know, you actually put on the spot, do you really believe in what you're putting over? You know, uh, you're not just taking things for granted, and yeah, it was great. It really was great. And if you, because I've camped here, I've, I've been here for the whole festival. Um, we've got great, great feedback. You know, just relentlessly since then. You know, people coming up and saying that they thought it was outstanding and all of this. You know, but it goes to show you that you make a real impact, uh, even though you're maybe not aware of it. People are really paying attention and sinking in, and they've, you know. It's not wise to assume that most people just know Holocaust is set. You know, we need to get out there and play more. Yeah, that's the thing. Because obviously, like you know, uh, your, your most well-known song in Heavy Metal Mania it goes in all the compilations. Uh -huh. And like I say, it gives people more chance to see the depth of your work. Doesn't it? Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's yeah. right. It's up to us to get out there yeah. and do more, do more of this, which uh, I'm well up for. Yeah. That's what I want to do. And you do a cover of the Small Hours as well. <laughs> yeah, how long have you been playing that? The Small Hours yeah. is my song. That's a Holocaust song? Yeah. The one that Metallica did? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Metallica covered not, me. Yeah. I can't cut that one out. Not the, not the other way yeah. around. Yeah. Yeah. I, thought it, I thought it was a Killing Joke song, was it? Or was that the... No, no yeah. they did a Killing yeah. Joke song as well, but they did a Holocaust song and that right, was yeah. The Small Hours. Yeah. Right, yeah. Now, The Small Hours was originally on the, uh, the live album, which was released in 82 of a live gig in 81. There's not been a studio version of it, a proper studio version of it, uh, right? But uh, yeah, it's a Holocaust song. Very unprofessional. Uh, we're not going to go to court of this, are we? Yeah. No. We <laughs> <laughs> got on the phone with Planet Mars. We're not going to go to court. Right. Is that one of the earlier Holocaust songs? Yes. Yes, it was. Uh, it was after the Nightcomers. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, it'd be eighty-one. It was written. Nineteen eighty-one. Yeah. Right. Did Metallica approach you to uh, cover the song or they just... Uh, yeah, they tried. They tried to get in touch. That was yeah. 87 when they covered it. Uh, they tried to get in touch with me. Lars Ulrich even phoned random John Mortimer's in the Edinburgh area right, yeah. because he knew yeah. that we were from Edinburgh. Yeah. Um, he didn't manage to get through. And, uh, eventually, I, I met them not long after on the Justice Tour. Right. right. And, um, you know, he sort of said to me, we, we just figured it would be okay. It's like, yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. okay. Yeah. I wasn't going to object to that. So like all that, after all that Napster thing, he, uh, he comes out with that one. Ah, yeah, I know, yeah, I know. It's go. pretty good, isn't it? It's yeah. good stuff. Well, large is large. You have to have a pushy front man, don't you, sometimes? Yeah, no, I mean, at the time, yeah. you know, I was listening to Ride the Lightning and Master of Puppets all the time, you know, I was an actual Metallica fan, so I was thrilled to bits. It's an honor, I suppose, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. 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 Great. I like their version as well. It's good. Well, it didn't do Diamond Head any harm, or no, I didn't no. do anyone any harm. No, no. Yeah. yeah. All right. So for those who don't know much about all of us, can you give me a bit of history of the band? How you how you founded? Yeah, we were founded in Edinburgh at the at school. Uh, all of us except for one guy were at the same high school, and we just you know mad about heavy rock as they called it in those days but we liked the, the, the term heavy metal was just beginning to be about to describe really heavy bands and we loved that we loved the idea of that i particularly loved the idea of uh, it being more abstract than heavy rock because heavy rock in those days like zeppelin and so on we loved it but it had all the blues influences the rock and roll influences and so on and we were really fascinated about well i was anyway fascinated with this idea of heavy metal being something new where you've got the heaviness, the excitement, 
and sort of purified it. It was just that rather than having the, the, the bluesy influences and all that type of stuff. And we were just so mad keen on it. It, was just, it had to happen that we, we formed a band. So, you know, it was really literally saving up pocket money for guitars and all this kind of thing. And then parents helped us out when they realised we were serious. So the band was, uh, we actually had instruments in 1979. Yeah, like we formed it as a matter of will in 1978. Um, the first single that came out was in January 1980. I actually mentioned at the show here that that was the first uh, song to be released into the commercial domain that had the term heavy metal in the title. I'm really pr proud of that, yeah. Heavy Metal Mania was uh, the single in 1980 and that was followed by the Nightcomers album in 1981. Uh, then a live album released in 1982 um, and then the band split and uh, I, can't, you know, the, the, the history gets a little bit complicated but basically I just sort of like carried it on through the 90s, we brought out albums in the 90s, uh, which were much more sort of progressive and um, really coming from a different kind of place. Now we're much back, much more back to the um, the, the heavy metal style in a more simple sense. Power trail. Uh, yeah. So I'm the only original member, but I wrote over 80 percent of the material in the early days anyway so that's the, the way the situation is right now so how long have you been the trail ah since uh 2003 i believe it was right. so yeah. quite some time now. Yeah. yeah i can remember hearing the heavy metal main on, on the friday rock show i'm thinking what the hell is this i mean just a right. but nothing well obviously i'm a big black sabbath fan and Blue cheer, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought, what the hell is this? Like, you know what I mean? People may, like, made a fuss about, you know, Venom in League with Satan. I thought, well, mm -hmm. I heard that five years earlier from uh, from Holocaust, that sort of, you know. Oh, yeah, it was. Something sad, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was ahead of its time, yeah. definitely. Um, I mean, the, the, the whole world was different then, though. I mean, the media really did have uh, control of what was going to be you know of what was cool and what wasn't in That's the right. UK anyway yeah. for sure pre-internet days you know uh, and you know I, generally although it's taken to be a legendary song now it, we were really slagged for that by the press at the time you know just a bunch yeah. of school kids and that you can tell you know how, how immature heavy metal mania you know yeah and it's like but, uh, things change you know the so fact is it was ahead of its time yeah I, I asked uh, you know Rob Wolf and Tiger Pan Tang and the other night about uh, his views on the internet and how it can make or break bands these days and you know and it, he did say like it's a good promotional tour, tool if you if you use it right and, uh, well the new wave of British heavy metal just to take that side of it is feels more like a movement now than it did back in the day yeah definitely and the two things that make it really happening now are the internet and budget airlines you know because it's right. massive in Europe yeah the whole grassroots thing uh, we've done more work in the last, more live work in the last uh, two and a half years than in the rest of the entire history of the band. Yeah. You know, um, and it's these two things, the internet and budget airlines, they make um, the organization of little festivals and big festivals possible, um, or not even that, but just uh, club gigs and actual tours. You know, we've done a lot of work in Greece, for example. We're, going to be setting up more of that for next year as well. Uh, really big in Greece, really big everywhere in Europe, it's great, very yeah. healthy. Yeah. But the fact that you can have a festival like this one now in Scotland shows that perhaps the UK is beginning to... It's about know, time too, I mean, we've got Bloodstock, but I mean, it's uh, mm -hmm. it's mainly like some of what they call a sort of thrash death metal band, uh, not too much new over British heavy metal, but you know... Yeah, but you could imagine it there though, you could imagine something yeah. like that on Bloodstock. Yeah. I know it's, it, 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 it's you know... There's still this kind of age consciousness, I think, in, in the UK, which is a bit of a shame, but that'll change. Yeah. Because the UK will eventually catch up with Europe, that's the way it always goes. <laughs> we produce the bands, but Europe does the scene. Yeah. You, know? you were saying before about the press, I mean, I, I can remember reading sounds, you know, the, the first Jeff Hart and piece about the new British heavy metal sort of thing, you know. I was, I was hearing, you know, like I said, no internet then, 
Mm. I had to get my sort of fix from like that from the Friday Rock show. That was yeah, it. well, yeah. me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, even you know, Angel Witch sessions and Friday sessions and Taurus and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. You, know, you couldn't sort of put YouTube on. There's no no no, no such thing there. Ah, young people yeah. today don't know how lucky they are. No, no, no. no yeah. <laughs> I, I I always say like you know, the, you know I'd rather, I like to be the age I am now and see the bands I saw. You know, back then, yeah. like say you mentioned about the term heavy rock, heavy metal. I mean, when I was growing up, it was just heavy rock and progressive rock, and that was it. Really, mm -hmm. it was either your that's right. Purple to your eye heaps on that side of it, then you, you know, your Sabbaths and, and priests and the, and the rock. Yeah, I mean, heavy metal mania was a, a, a quite a conscious attempt to try and establish this idea of heavy metal. Yeah, that that, yeah. that really was, you know. Um, we wanted to call it that, and people used to snigger, you know, whenever you use the term heavy metal. Now it is worldwide, totally yeah. accepted, just yeah. accepted everywhere. Yeah, it's crazy. So it's of course, in the early ages, you get the, you know, the early sort of thrash metal bands coming through the American, mm -hmm. very, you know, thrash metal bands. But uh, yeah, I loved all that. I love it all. Uh, I love all of metal, you know, uh, all the different styles. It's great. At the end of the day, it's, it's all guitar based, isn't it? I mean, there's no point to having your little. You know, clicks here and there. No, no. Yeah. And as I say, with the new wave bands now, it does feel much more like a movement. Yeah. You know, we, we sort of uh, get, we organise gigs together sort of in, in each other's hometown and that. We yeah. did that most recently with Spartan Warrior. Um, and, uh, you know, we support each other, we like each other. It's, you know, on the internet again, it's very obvious that we support each other and like each other and that. So it, it is much more like a movement now than it, right, than yeah. it was back yeah. then. Back then, there was a lot more competition because everybody was vying for the attention of the big media, the, the big labels and whatnot. Yeah. You know, to try and follow with Iron Maiden and Def Leppard and Saxon yeah. and so on. Yeah. Well, as I said, you know, some bands made it, you know, just the right place, right time. It's a, mm -hmm. and that's people like yourself and, you know, and, and, and the Tigers and, Barnes Diamond Edge all on the on the on the edge just uh, yeah. just getting the right tour isn't it you know, you know the right push at the right time. Well on our yeah. new yeah, yeah on our new album right uh, it, there's a song Expander we played that on Friday the Friday night as well yeah. uh, and one of the hook lines there is this is the right time this is the right place you know yeah so I mean we're just keeping doing it because we love it yeah. and uh, we have no sort of like mindset that this is going to be this going to stay small or it's going to be big or whatever whatever it'll be it'll be it'll one thing's for sure, we're going to keep on doing it. That's it. Because that's you know, they really do love it. I mean, when I sing, you know, I've got heavy metal music in my blood, now it's every bit as much as real to me, now 52 years old, like, as it was when I was 15 when I wrote it. Yeah. You know, I wrote that when I was 15 years old. Yeah, you know, well, I'm just turned 52 and uh, I say it's a way of life, isn't it? You know, I'll never stop going to gigs. And yeah, that's it. You know, that's I do, you know, it's, you know, it's, uh, yeah, I know, and there's a lot of, the one thing I love as well is there's a lot of young Holocaust fans now as well, especially in Europe, yeah. um, and they're, they're not really coming with that much by way of preconceptions, they, they just know, oh, Heavy Metal Mania are there for a historic band and so on, and they're much more open-minded. It's not like, well, you can do this, you're not allowed to do that, you can, you know, there, there's none of that shit. Yeah. Uh, but the younger, the younger generation, so are, there's like, we just really need to get our new album because we just finished recording a new album. We want to get that to the, as many people as possible, just to let them get access to it. As well. That's the big thing. Yeah. Uh, so again, hopefully the internet will aid and abet us in that uh, endeavour. Well, as I say, it's, it's got its good points, it's got its bad points. Is there's a lot of you know, keyboard warriors there that uh, <laughs> they know everything, but uh, then there's the other half that will just say, "Well, I like myself." I saw your name, I think online last year. I thought, Holocaust, are they still going? I've not read about mm. yeah. I haven't read about you. Yeah. You, you sort of think, well, are they still going or not? And yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. And, and I mean, yeah. what are people going to think otherwise? You know, I, it's like I can totally forgive people as well for turning up and thinking that they're going to see a five-piece band with Gary Lettuce singing and, and all this kind of thing. Yeah. Um, that happens quite a lot, and sometimes people are. You know, taken by surprise, but they warm to it, and they, you know, it's up to us to establish the fact that Holocaust is now this three-piece band, and it's happening. Yeah. You know, we're really, really proud of our new album, Predator, um, but we don't actually have a record deal as such yet. Yeah. Um, so, but uh, plenty of contacts and interest, so we'll see how that goes. 
I think it's actually important for us at, at the same time not to be over, too over ambitious at the moment because it's, it's, we just need to get real mo steady momentum rolling. A you know, lot of live work actually getting the thing distributed decently. Yeah. You know, some decent distribution, some license deals in the United States and so on. That'd be good. Yeah. We did a, our first gig in Canada not that long ago as well, in Montreal, the Wings of Metal Festival, right. um, where Satan had been there the year before. That we had lined it after then, uh, and that was fantastic. You know, and again, there's this great interest in, in well, in Montreal anyway. I don't know about the rest of Canada, right, yeah. definitely in Montreal. Yeah. Well, if you look at you know back to the eighties with the Raven going out there, hmm? being being supported by Metallica, you know, right, absolutely, morning, yeah, just after they released Wiped Out. So, yeah, yeah. John Gallagher uh, said recently, you know. Uh, he was talking about this thing about it being more of a movement now than it ever was. Yeah. You know, and he said uh, we're all survivors one way or another, and it's like, yeah, that's a good, that is a good way to put it. Yeah. You know, because it's not being overly ambitious, but it's not being defeatist either. It's just we do what we do because we love it and yeah. we're going to keep on doing it. And who knows what's going to happen? Have you heard the new album? The new Raven. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. No. Absolutely. But he's still, his voice is still, you know, shattering windows everywhere. Brilliant. Hello, yeah. Brilliant, brilliant. Oh, right. I must catch up with that actually. Thanks, thanks for reminding me. Yeah, I've done a review, so I'll, I'll uh, read it for Manny Marsh, and I'll just send a link to your page. And it's a, but uh, excellent. Yeah, it's a good album, about fourteen songs long. It's a, so there, there's no sort of shortage of material. They just yeah, they put yeah. it all on there. We've got millions of songs, millions. Yeah. I mean, we we we've, we've got forty five minutes on this this album, the Predator album. We actually did it deliberately so that it would fit vinyl. You know what I mean? There's a side one and a yeah. side two. Yeah. Um, because vinyl's becoming very important these days as yeah. well. It is for the, you know, uh, I, I was just saying to Rob the other night, um, I, I've just been reviewing the new uh, Rush releases mm -hmm. on 180 gram vinyl, and it's like a big deal about this, but there's no difference in quality has been proven. Mm -hmm. and, and they're 20.99. And there's nothing, there's no like sort of remastered, blah, 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 blah. It's 20.99 for a, a, bit of, a bit of vinyl, and it's not even a gatefold sleeve, but it's a, it's a, I, I do, th and there's like a, a new Motorhead album out in, in August. Right. And the, um, the retail price so far is forty-two pounds. Whoa! Pre, you know, pre, pre, you know, advance. Wow. Forty-two. Pounds. It's a lot of money, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. No, it's, uh, but I, anyway, I mean, like we decided to make it that you know, like a forty-five minute album. We reckon that's a good length. We, you know, I, yeah. I, I, you know, some of these albums are, they can be great albums, but they just go on far, far too long. Um, I'm a big fan of the the latest Opeth album, by the way. Just in passing, I really love that. Yeah, that's a, the, the, the sort of band. They're not they're not afraid to mess around. You oh, get yeah. like the old you know death metal over the fans. Shout out for the Lorenzo concerts, and you're not going to get it anymore, really. You know, but uh, yeah, Pale uh, Pale Communion's a great yeah. album. But anyway, how we've got uh, in addition to this album, we've got about another three albums worth of material. So yeah, and, and most of it is recorded to really decent demo standards. So you know, it's like. Uh, we're, we're good to go if we get the opportunities yeah. and we'll keep pushing for the opportunities. That's basically where we are. You know? Well, I say if you look back to the 70s, you know, Sabbath and Zeppelin releasing two albums a year. Uh, yeah. And then and touring heavily on them as well, so it's a... Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I, those were the days. Yeah. yeah. It isn't like, you know, five years to record Hysteria. I know, I know. A week to get the drums sound right. Yeah. The, I was going to say you can overwork things, but then again, the, the production on that Opeth album that I mentioned is just magnificent yeah. and uh, beautiful. Yeah. Uh, but that's a different thing. It is, it's all horse of the court. Right, before you go, I know you're a busy man. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned from the stage the other day that um, playing your guitar through a friend's amp, jamming to uh, Sabbath. Oh, yes, yeah. yes, yeah. Ed Dudley, of course, Ed Dudley. Yeah. He when was uh, he was the other guitarist that when right. we formed the, the the original band. He was the one guy who was at a different high school. Yeah. Um, he was from Wolverhampton originally. He was, um, but he had an amp before the rest of us had any amps, yeah, right? So we used to go around to his house of it, you know, with the with the instruments and that, and try and cram everybody <laughs> into this one yeah. combo. Yeah. Um, it was a hacker combo. It was called a hacker amp or something like that. Sound would probably would re we would regard the sound now as bloody dreadful, but I mean yeah. it, was, it was good in those days with our fuss pedals and that. We used to sort of like do Black Sabbath riffs, and um, as a result of that, I remember at that session, the the you know I, I got the the riff for the night comments, the, the title track of the yeah. the first album and so on, um, and that was great. And 
you see the band split um, in 82 and I had not had a contact from Edmund Dudley um, until Friday night when he saw that Wildfire was on and posted a, a message there you know to me saying uh, you know good luck with the gig and it's great that Holocaust is still going and you're still playing those songs and I remember those days with the, the Hacker Amp and all that and the Black Sabbath riffs yeah. and he said I'll never forget them uh, I don't know if he was drunk when he wrote that but it's really nice yeah. whatever you know it's really really nice to, yeah. to have that he said his name was Dudley Dudley yeah and lived near Wolverhampton that's quite good isn't it? I know I mean it's <laughs> it no, yeah. but it genuinely is his name yeah yeah, yeah. So you say that uh, Army was your sort of major influence, Tony Army? Yeah, um, well, definitely one of them. I mean, me personally as a guitarist, and this might be surprising, I, I think uh, Steve Hackett actually had a, a major influence on me, right. wise But when it comes to that, the riffs, oh yeah, of yeah. course, Tony's yeah. the man. I mean, yeah. Tony Iommi is the man. He's the, he's the one that really brought that about. You mentioned Blue Cheer earlier, and yeah, we were influenced by them as well. Yep. But Tony, I know me, I mean, you can't deny it. He is Mr. Metal, you know, that's where it started. He still is. Yeah. yeah. He yeah. still is. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. A few more quick ones. Uh, are you a favourite album of all time? Is it uh, you too many? Something, uh, you can, something you can just never grow tired of playing? Uh, in a way, it's a bit of a silly sort of concept, you know, a favourite album of all time, but I, I guess if I was to choose one, it would actually be Presence by Led Zeppelin, right? Yeah. And I don't, I can't really tell you why, there's just something about it, and that something has never, never dropped in intensity through the years. I don't, I don't know what that is, and so that, I yeah. would say, yeah. If it was Desert Island Discs here, I probably yeah. would have <laughs> Presence by Led Zeppelin, Presence. yeah. Right, yeah. 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 Um, a favourite gig, not not one of your own that's, that you've seen over the years. Mm -hmm. Again, a difficult one. Yeah. Um, well, this this well, the first one won't sound bizarre, um, but certainly the one I remember being really excited about uh, when I was young was the Bomber tour uh, with Motorhead. Yeah, man. Um, that was that was really something. Um, I also saw Rush on Farewell to Kings. Now it was a very special moment. That, but I don't think they performed particularly well on that night. Right. So I would, I would go probably for the Bomber tour. However, however, to be perfectly honest, for me the most special gig that I've ever been to was Lady Gaga, and that was recently. Right. Um, yeah. On the Art Pop tour. Yeah. That was absolutely fucking mind blowing. Right. You know, I, I, I really love her and I, I love that gig so much. I mean, that, that has got to be the most special live moment for me. Right. Yeah. Lady Gaga. Yeah. So there you are. Just unexpected, maybe, but that, yeah. that's the way it is. Oh, so it's, all, yeah. it's, all, it's all live, it's all a live show, isn't it? Like, you know, oh, I, yeah. that, that, that is some live show. <laughs> well, you, know, you, you mentioned Motet the Bomber, Bomber Tour, I mean, my first tour with them is Ace of Spades, and uh, mm -hmm. that's something I'll never forget. Like, you know, oh, yeah, they are. Just, there for two weeks, more or less. Indeed. Yeah. Which is as it should be. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, well, as somebody once said, if it's too loud, you're too old. Aye, aye. Yeah. And with that, I'd just like to thank you for your time. It's been a pleasure meeting you. And you. Over the weekend. Yeah. It's been great.